Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at gamma ray spectrometers and how they unlock some very special secrets from the planet Mercury. One of the big questions always was, does Mercury contain water, or at least water ice, because without the atmosphere, without any measurable atmosphere, so to speak, you couldn't expect to find liquid water because liquid water does not remain liquid if there's not enough atmospheric pressure. But at least we could potentially find water ice question may be where on Mercury because it gets so hot on Mercury during the daytime temperatures will reach 400 or above degrees centigrade and water of course could not survive those kind of temperatures however at the northern polar regions and the southern polar regions there are some craters and inside those craters there are regions where the sun rays will never hit because the actual tilt of Mercury is virtually zero degrees and therefore the sunlight doesn't have an opportunity to get into the bottom of those craters there. So there's potentially water ice in those craters, both in the northern pole region and the southern pole region. So one of the things we could do with a gamma ray detector is see whether or not there are, there's indeed water on the surface. How does it do that? Well, first of all, the detector is made of a very pure germanium crystal and it produces an electric charge each time a gamma ray enters upon that crystal. And that charge can be detected, and from that charge we can both detect the number of charges or charge pulses that we see, and the strength of the charge pulse which is associated with the frequency of the gamma ray. Now on Mercury we have the opportunity to really take full advantage of that because Mercury has virtually no atmosphere so there's no, no opposition to the impact of the cosmic rays that impact every planet but especially Mercury and all those cosmic rays easily may make it to the surface of the planet and penetrate the top portion of that surface. In doing so, they will impact the atoms of the material that makes up the surface and they will knock loose both uh, neutrons and protons from those elements inside the top layer of mercury. Now, those protons either will go straight up and back into space and they can be detected. Those are fast pro uh, I'm, I meant to say neutrons. So, in, in some cases, the neutrons will, will be knocked off in a vertical direction. They will go through into space. It can be detected by the messenger spacecraft, by the gamma ray detector and the neutron detector. And if, when they're fast neutrons, then they come from the material here that is not related to any water. Now, some of those protons and neutrons will then travel to adjacent atoms. In some cases, those adjacent atoms will absorb an impact in neutron which will elevate the energy state of that atom and then when that energy state drops back down the difference of that energy will be sufficient to create a gamma ray and that gamma ray will, will then of course go in all directions but those that go straight up will go back into space and those can be detected by the gamma ray detector on board of the of the messenger spacecraft now depending upon what element those gamma rays came from they will produce gamma rays of different frequencies and different energies. So for example, at about 1.4 million electron volts, that's a gamma ray that came from potassium. At about 3 million electron volts, that's a gamma ray that came from silicon. 6 million electron volts would be a gamma ray coming from oxygen. And 7.6 million electron volts would be a gamma ray coming from iron. So you can see that we can actually determine what element these gamma rays came from based upon the frequency and therefore the associated energy of each gamma ray. Now the frequency of these gamma rays, they're typically in the order of 1 in 100 seconds, 1 in 10 seconds, something like that. And in some cases the abundance is great, it could be 1 every second. But again, the abundance is determined by the number of gamma rays detected and the type of gamma ray tells you which element it is. Also, sometimes the neutrons, the fast neutrons that get ejected when the particles are, are um, collided with, with cosmic particles, then the neutrons potentially could knock to another direction where there might be a water molecule in the form of ice perhaps, or minerals that contain hydrogen. It turns out when it impacts the hydrogen of the water molecule, or if it impacts the hydrogen of the mineral, then the neutron will slow down quite a bit. A lot of energy is lost by the neutron if it hits the hydrogen atom of a water molecule or the hydrogen atom of an ice molecule, I should say, or the water or the hydrogen atom of another mineral. 
And so when those slow neutrons then get knocked off into space, then they can be detected by the detectors on board of the messenger spacecraft. And then we can say, hey, look, we get slow neutrons that normally would not come as the result of a cosmic particle impact onto the surface of the planet. And therefore, that must be a neutron that was where its energy was absorbed by a, hydrogen by a hydrogen atom. And therefore, depending upon the abundance of those neutrons, we can detect that there must be a layer of ice there. And in that very fashion, we found that there's actually an enormous amount of ice at the North Pole and at the South Pole of Mercury hiding below the rays of the sun inside the bottom of those craters. Many of them actually have been covered up by some carbonaceous material, but luckily this process can actually get through that layer and detect what's underneath it. So this is typically water with a thin layer of carbonaceous material on top of it, but nevertheless, the instrumentation on board the spacecraft can indeed detect and this is how we knew water was on Mercury. Actually, quite a bit of it, of course, in the frozen form. And that's how these gamma ray spectrometers actually work.